This is Captain... So the unfortunate thing about people who are learning about Dr. Sebi right now is that they're only learning him through sound bites and clips, you know. So the main thing is alkaline, 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 alkaline. Gotta have my alkaline foods. Gotta alkalize, alkaline water, alkaline this, alkaline that. Is bleach acid or alkaline? Alkaline. How about ammonia? So there's alkalosis and there's acidosis. And the reason why he pushed alkalinity so much is because alkalinity incites electricity, right? But also because our equilibrium was so far off to the left and in the world of acidity that we needed an abundance of alkalinity kind of get ourselves back to that little narrow area of 7.35 like what our blood is, you know? Um, majority of our digestive fluids are alkaline. Um, secretin, which is bicarbonate, which we secrete, uh, chylecystokinin, as well as, um, what am I to say, a bile. All, all these different chemicals that are secreted during digestion, they are predominantly alkaline because the acidic thing occurs in the stomach. And then once that chime is created and it enters into the small intestines, that acidity has no place in the small intestines, so we start secreting all this stuff to kind of alkalize that, you know? Our saliva does it too when food enters our mouth. That's another way we know we're not supposed to eat meat because our saliva is alkalizing, not, a, not acidity. But carnivores, wolves, um, um, uh, lions, they secrete acidic agents, you see, to help to break that flesh down. You know, matter of fact, they bury flesh in the dirt and let it sit and kind of ferment and then come back and eat it too. You know, so I know we don't want to do none of that. I don't think anybody want to, you don't want to put a burger in the ground for three, four days and <laughs> put it on a little mustard yeah. ketchup, <laughs> little kombucha burger, <laughs> right? No, we don't want to do none of that. You know, so I just want to, they talk about continuing legacy, continuing legacy, and it's not just regurgitating this information, it's driving the point home so that the, the fact is he's not here any longer, there's no one to speak on his behalf, so people can kind of interpret his information how they want, they can get it wrong, okay? But I was there, and I was raised in it, you know, so I have a, I have a great understanding of what his point is, and then I've been doing the research and the studies all, all these years. I know how the body works. Not everything. The minute that I think I know something, I don't know nothing. You know? Because the body is, they say the kingdom of God is within you. There's no limit when we go inside ourselves. The more we look, the deeper the hole gets. The more refined it gets. The more particular it gets. And then the rules change. Because quantum mechanics occur on a microscopic scale, but Newtonian physics is on the macro scale. You can't apply Newtonian physics in the microcosm. It, it don't work the same on an atomic level. There's a whole other set of rules that pop off. You know? But one thing that is consistent is the body is electric. Okay? So cellular chelation, simply the cleansing of the so, cell. Another point that I want to make is that Bacteria are women, and viruses are men. Let's say it again. The virus is the man, the bacteria is the woman. How do I know this? Because a virus comes, finds a bacteria, because he can't reproduce itself. Yes, not just destroys her, but he penetrates her. And he inseminates in her, and he uses her machinery in order to reproduce himself. Okay, so the cell, the eukaryotic cell that we know of, cell membrane, nucleus, um, um, uh, ribosomes, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, that is the male nuclear viral cell, and the mitochondria is the woman, the bacteria, that is able to 
divide, fuse on its own, and has its own genome. The health of the body is based on the woman. It's based on the mitochondria, not on the cells. Not That's why there's something called epigenetics. What does that mean? Epa means above. So we've always felt that we were caught up in what? My mama got diabetes. My daddy had cancer. I'm going to have that. But epigenetics shows that environmental factors and your current diet play a huge role in those factors expressing themselves, which means you'll only fall victim to those pathologies if you go down the same path your foreparents did. But if your mitochondria is being well taken care of, they won't. Because the mitochondria dictates what the chromosomes do, what the cell does, not vice versa. So the key is mitochondrial health. The key is to take care of your mitochondria. As men, we are always taught, take care of the woman. We don't open up doors for y'all because y'all can't. We don't put y'all in the car first because that ain't why. Like, we do it because y'all are the woman. And we have to respect you. And the same way we have to respect women in this world, we have to respect the woman in our body. And if we take care of the mitochondria initially, the rest of the body is well. All right, what happens? So deodorant and aluminum, okay? This is how a lot of women get breast cancer. Okay? Because the aluminum from the deodorant gets into the lymph nodes. The lymph node gets um, constipated, blocked up, and becomes hard. And then that's the thing that they usually feel it. You know? So that's another way. So it's like, why are they doing all this stuff? They don't, you know, the reason why most people are funky under their arms is because of the way that they eat and the lifestyle that they live. Okay. There's a different smell in the arm. Now, I'm not saying you go vegan, you know, uh, it's roses. <laughs> like, no. It's, still, it's a different, it's different. But it's, it's still a whiff. <laughs> you still, still want to rub it's under there. And get oil, yeah. oil, it's easier. Juice. Like it's not a masking. Yeah. Like men's deodorant is chalky. Like it's designed to go on and like clock everything. And then just it, it clogs everything up and just emits this old spice. <laughs> and I'm like, what woman loves the smell of old spice? When I first smelled it, I was like, this is what women want to smell on me? I was like, I really got this thing messed up. I don't think I'm going to have no girl because I don't get it. So makeup, that's another thing. I remember when I was working in a movie theater and um, um, how am I not forgetting her name? Like Monica. Uh, everybody knows the singer Monica? Mm -hmm. Just one of them days. Okay. So when she came out, I was her age. So like I had a real big crush on Monica. You know what I mean? She was just confident and her style was dope. Loved her. So I'm working at the movie theater. She comes up to the movie theater to get a ticket, right? I'm looking at her face. It's like super pale. And it's like, ugh. And I'm like, wow. Makeup. <laughs> and what is it about the makeup? The heavy metals get into the skin. They weigh the skin down. Your elastin gets destroyed. It does not bounce back. And then every time you use the makeup, it gets worse and worse and worse. So that doesn't mean women are not supposed to have makeup. I mean, you look back in antiquity, women always had some beautiful something on their face. But that's why we got berries. That's why there's minerals out of the earth that, you know, once you add an acid to it, it turns this color. You turn an alkaline to it, you put an alkaline on it, it turns this color. Baking you know, soda. Yeah. It's so many different ways that colors can be made and beauty can be expressed in the face and on the body. You know, but we uh, believe in L'Oreal and, and CoverGirl and the, the, all the rest of this stuff where, first of all, the reason why Rihanna just blew up is because there's no makeup with our complexions, our shades. Mm -hmm. She's like the first one to really come out having all our shades in there. And, you know, she, you know, she, she sold a whole lot. Now, in regards to what her ingredients are, I don't know. You know, she is a weight, like. Rihanna's not no fool, you know, but um, I'm not sure if she's woke enough where, you know, she's on that tip. If it was, she would probably advertise that right. along with it, you know, but she hasn't. 
So, you know, the, the See, makeup. I like that. That must be true. <laughs> so, smell makes a big deal. You know? And even in our slang, you, you, you smell me? Like, we say that. Why do we say that? Because that's, like, how we really feel each other. You know? Somebody's lying to you. You can smell that on them. Like... You know, this situation stinks. Why do we say that? How does the situation stink? You, the smell test. Yeah, exactly. It's something like you ain't smelling nothing, but you're smelling something. And it ain't agreeing with you. You know what I mean? So aromatics are, one, a term that deals with smell, but it's also the name of the benzene ring that is that makes up the molecules that create what we smell. Aromaticity, okay, or aromatics, okay. So when you find things like cilantro, saffron, um, cardamom, anise, clove, they're so potent because their aromaticity is high because they have these, these rings in their molecular structure that we connect with and they're pleasant. And that's how we know it's good for us. It's rare that we smell anything good that's not good for us. Now, ain't you gonna say, so what about fried chicken? Like, I love the smell of fried chicken. You don't, you don't love the smell of fried you chicken. Should. That worm inside you love the smell of fried chicken. And he hijacked your senses and nervous system so that every time you smell that chemical or that oil, you start salivating and you want it to satisfy its needs. And the way you know that is because if you just take a chicken and you leave that thing out dead somewhere, that smell, that aroma of that chicken <laughs> is not going to do you no justice. You are not going to say, whoa, that thing smells. Yo, let's put some ketchup on this. Like, you're not going to do it. Check on everything I say because I'm a pathological liar. Just imagine I'm a pathological liar. I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay? So you you know what, man? I don't believe that KT guy, man. That dude's lying all the time. I'm about to go double check on this. So you go home, you do your research, it'll start tying everything together. And then you'll know it with a grain of salt from your perspective so that when you see someone in need, what you can communicate to them because if you try to communicate KT to this person when I'm not there it might reverse and backfire so you got to make sure you able to speak it as well that's why I encourage everybody double check on everything I'm talking about it's just to introduce thought so holiday cleansing sale okay because I know people still eating all types of stuff get the worms out get the candida out by way of the juggledine the key layer that I carry is the Conjures Crispus Concentrate. It does so much. I could do a whole presentation on it. If y'all go to my YouTube channel, I've been getting very frequent with my videos as of lately. Yeah. So you just go to KT, the Arch Degree on YouTube. You'll see a video on C3. And then Perilla Oil is for your Omega-3 content to bring the inflammation down. You know. Um, and then, yeah, Instagram is KT, the Arch Degree. We did out my own weight. Um, YouTube and then Kamani Tate on Facebook and then if anybody got inquiries you can send it by way of that email okay so yeah that is the presentation for tonight I will open up the floor to Q&A 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 anybody yes Actually, um, one of the, one of the goals I've had you know since I'm getting ready to go into my jubilee year so one of the things I want to do is go vegetarian Okay. Yeah, the step, you know, step by step. step, by step. step. I got you. Um, and I know, I guess what I'm uh, challenged with is finding uh, ways to cook or ways to prepare. Yeah, that's or what I'm working what to on prepare. my cookbook. That's what I'm working on my cookbook. Because I do have textual issues when it comes to some food. I can't stand eggplant. I just don't like the way it feels in my mouth. How do you cook it? <laughs> We're gonna see. We're gonna tackle this right now. We're gonna wrestle. We're gonna wrestle the tiger right now. All the way down so it's crunchy. Hold on, hold on. See, yeah, chop it up very small. Let's see what she does though. What do you do with the eggplant? Oh, I. Yeah. No, I don't. Okay, so what has other? What have others done to the egg? See, somebody has done the eggplant wrong. 
They did the eggplant wrong and gave it to you. Yeah, I don't like. I don't what, like it. How have they prepared it? The one, the ones that you have eaten. How, how was it prepared? How did it come? Probably eggplant parmesan is the way most people have it. And then okay. I'm trying to think, maybe like an eggplant casserole or something. But and like, what is the texture of the? Egg? Still got the skin on it? Mushy. Mushy, slimy. no slimy, yeah. right? Okay. So yeah, I squash, that's why I don't like squash. And I don't do squash. That's why I don't squash it over. It's it sticky. I like, like it. slimy. Yeah. Now, if I whip out my eggplant, my squash to y'all, you'll be a true believer. It's one of my number one dishes that I sell. I convert people all the time. It's taste and texture, man. I get it. I get it. Same thing with okra. People like slimy. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. If it's slimy, they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> See, the slimy is a mechanism for okra to point out the people who don't know how to use it. Like, this guy does not know me well. Slime, you know what I'm saying? The slime is for your stomach, though. Like, it's real good. It's, a, it's mucilage, and it helps with your mucus lining. So it's good for you, believe it or not. But it's all how you cook it. So with the eggplant, this is what you do. You take an eggplant, okay? Anybody ever seen Psycho? Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the most famous scene in Psycho? Uh, you cook. Shower scene. Shower. You cook. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to do this to the... You do that to the eggplant. You take a knife and you go Psycho on You start stabbing it all <laughs> over the place. Like somebody that just on your nerves that day, you just, <laughs> it's, you just hit it a couple times, right? Mm -hmm. You pierce in the eggplant. You get some oil. And now you regret the fact that you just <laughs> murdered this eggplant. So now you, you're Masao, I'm sorry, baby. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to stab you all up. <laughs> you're coating it with this you oil, right? Oil. Okay. So then you put it in a pan, cover it with aluminum foil. You throw it in the oven for like an hour and a half, two hours. The skin of the, oil, the, skin of the eggplant, which is like melanin, by the way, that purple, that's some powerful stuff. It traps the heat inside and then the heat escapes out of all the lacerations hits the aluminum you create convection and you cook the eggplant with the skin the skin becomes the cooker so when you pull it out when you pull it out yes it's going to be soft but this is just to manipulate the cooking and bring the essence of the eggplant out now you have something you have a you have a blank canvas and whatever you prepare it will take on the flavor of that thing. Mm -hmm. So you add your onions and you add your peppers and you might use some cardamom, some saffron in there, or some smoked dry, sun-dried tomatoes. You get funky with it. Saute it in a pan, put it back in the oven. Because I want to. That's what they do with brisket and all that stuff. They <laughs> bake it like 80 times, right? right? You pull that thing back out, wonderful color, great smell. When you taste it, it's going to be amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna have to. I might have to do eggplant this Saturday just because of that. Maybe maybe I'll make a small pan of that, and if y'all come, y'all can see for yourself. And you can do the same thing with squash. <coughs> see, the thing is, we're not trained on how to use this stuff. You go to France, like France is this culinary powerhouse, right? Because they understand the science of everything that they prepare, and they're so passionate about it. They're the ones that can make doo doo taste like ice cream. <laughs> I swear. French could make doo doo taste like ice cream. You think it's chocolate, but it's not. You know what I mean? They get down. A good example of that the movie Ratatouille. It was a rat. Came great cook because he was passionate. He was in France. Okay? He was in America. Wouldn't have worked. Love it. Love it. Okay? Yeah, Ratatouille was my joy, man. That's my dude right there. But the main, what is ratatouille? It's a squash dish. Zucchini and yeah, squash, yeah. So, um, it's all in the spices and it's in the technique. And I know people who don't like avocado because they've never had a ripe one. And I get it because there's so many avocados, they're gas, you get them, they're watery, or they're too hard. And avocado, that yellow is supposed to be like a mustard yellow. It's supposed to be a real strong green. And it's supposed to be so good that you don't even need to season it when you taste it because of the salt content when you got a real avocado. Mm -hmm. But like maybe one out of every 20 avocados that I buy is like a okay. real ripe one. a little bit of Chinese medicine and they, they taste a different area. If, you, if you're in a different stage for your healing, like, you know, they have the, the, um, the acupuncture, they have all the chi and they 
and I always tend to have a liver thing. It makes mm. it be cooked vegetables if you're mm. trying to heal the liver. So just just being mindful of the, the body mm -hmm. and what the body needs because sometimes raw might be hard to digest. Mm -hmm. and, oh yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, we don't we don't know how to chew. We don't know how to digest. And if we've been eating meat for so long and our body's not designed for meat, there's certain uh, secretions that we ain't pumping out any longer. Certain parts of the liver shut down because they like, man, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't used me since 89, but you hollered at me for now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't, don't holler at me now. You know, so you got to like work that thing back up. But like how she said, she put the vegetarian first. Cool. Drop them items. You know, the hardest thing to drop. That cheese, boy. Cheese, yeah. Cheese, cheese, cheese. That cheese, that cheese. That cheese. It's the that's good then. That's good. That means you should be able to go straight vegan. Because you know, my mama wanted everybody to bring two racks of ribs for Christmas. Oh well, after, after <laughs> that, I guess. And it's hard to get around your family. You want to eat all those ingredients just to bless and honor. That was there were so many reasons that got me back on meat, and one of them was constantly saying no. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, if I eat it in moderation, keep it on my diet, then the blessing of fellowship, then I'm not saying no all the time. But. Yeah, the whole concept of even eating meat was culturally based. Like these, these are, when I did the vegan gene, I showed the quote from the woman from the Smithsonian and everything. Like these are the paleontologists, anthropologists, these are people who yeah. dig up bones and all type of stuff. Yeah. They know that we started eating meat and that we adopted, I mean, we started eating fruits and vegetables, we adopted eating meat as a custom later because of what because of conditions think about the bible the bible started in the garden the only reason why people got all gangster in the bible is because they left the garden and all this other crap started happening Man, I don't yeah you in the desert and you ain't ate nothing and there's a cactus and they got thorns all over and that lizard just ran by <laughs> you gonna holler at the lizard man <laughs> what you gonna do you know so when we had tribes and people started eating meat, the meat was like something like weekly. It wasn't even an everyday thing. You think people was eating quarter quarter pounders and, and dollar menu Wendy's and, and pork egg rolls and stuff, pizza, eight different things throughout the day, every single no, like if you ate that much in the tribe, they'd kill you. There's a certain amount of food for everybody. And you didn't even do your work for the year. Like, you don't get nothing. You had to add to it. You know what I'm saying? You had a relationship with the cow. You had a relationship with the pheasant. Okay, because there was no chicken, you know, or the quail. You know, you had a relationship with these animals. You grew them up. You fed them real things. People think because they eat free-range chicken, they think free-range mean that the chicken's outside running around eating worms and grain. No, free-range, they still in the house. They just not in a cage. Pecking each other's bodies out, <laughs> peeing on each other. You were pointing. How much is this? Oh, okay, so the C3 Conscious Christmas Concentrate 16 ounce bottle, it's a month supply. This is really 64 cups of tea in a bottle. I know it's 16 ounces, but it's a concentrate. You add a tablespoon of that to two cups of water, make a tea, so you get two cups of tea every single day. Because it's a month supply and all the properties that it's able to help you with, normally it's $70 on my site. But I have a 25% off sale going on right now. I think that makes it like $52.50 or something like that. I have that on sale at the moment. Okay, so, so when people ask, okay, hey, what do I get, Kate? So you got all this stuff. I got this going, that going on. I say start with the C3. That's something you could do. It's real simple. You give it to the children. You give it to your wife, whole family to try it out. And everybody that gets the first bottle gets the second bottle, this third bottle, fourth is bottle. Jumbadine, um, this is for getting rid of the candida, the worms, the parasites, and it's the iodine content, so it's thyroid health. The C3 is thyroid health as well. Um, and this is 50 um, right now, but 40 in the class and today. And then the Perilla oil is $50. This is the source of ALA. Alpha lean omega acid. The idea is to get your ALA numbers up so that you can start converting ALA to DHA. Once you have a certain amount of oh, age, mama's probably ready to shut it down. I don't be trying to have her here too late. Um, 
So yeah, if anybody's interested in any of the products, I'll be over at the table. I know there's a couple people that came into the class that wasn't able wasn't able to pay because I wasn't about to say, yeah, give me, give me the money <laughs> and all that type of stuff. So y'all can give it to me over at the table. Um, and then somebody's supposed to be doing a PayPal. So I'll, I'll pull out the, not PayPal, but the card. Yeah, I'll pull the, the swiper out. But thank you all for coming. I'll see y'all over at the table. Oh, my God.